Rise of China, and welcome to your Monday, everybody. Six o'clock here, Jason and Alicia, after a uh, mixed bag of a weekend weather-wise. Yeah, it was really hot Friday, kind of got cold and rainy Saturday, and then mm -hmm. Sunday, yesterday, was super windy. We broke up the kite. <laughs> the little guy loved it, guy. It was perfect for that yesterday. I, I can only imagine. Yeah, it was for sure on the breezy side, and a little breezy today, not as windy as yesterday. Uh, you could notice a little wildfire smoke as well, a little haze uh, later this afternoon. West wind at three miles per hour. We'll see northwest winds increase throughout the day. We'll see that wind direction obviously shift right now coming out of the west. We'll see it shift to the northwest later on. 66 by 9 a.m. and by 11, temperatures already above the 70 degree mark. The next three days, we start to warm up. Now Tuesday, noticeably warmer, mid to upper 80s, and then by Wednesday, hitting the big 9-0. Alicia? It's going to be hot. All right, guy, thank you. Let's give you a look at the Monday morning commute. Here's the map. Check your own route. Mostly green. Seen one minor disturbance, a crash out of Minneapolis, 94 westbound. Uh, I found it on the cameras. It's uh, you can see there blocking the right shoulder again at 55 and 94 westbound, not causing any slowdowns, but something I'll be keeping tabs on and have an update for you in a little bit. Now to our top story here at six, the aftermath of a violent 36 hours in Brooklyn Park. This morning, police are investigating three shootings. One of them was deadly. So take a look at this map. These are the three scenes. Police are investigating. One of those shootings happened near a strip mall on Edinburgh Center Drive. The CC is live in Brooklyn Park, where neighbors say something needs to be done to stop this violence. CC, good morning. Good morning. That's right. Yeah, three different shootings within hours of each other really has many in the community concerned this morning. We have reached out to uh, police just to get any new updates about the investigation into these shootings. We're still waiting to hear back, but here's a breakdown of everything that police have told us so far. Well, police say that this all started on Saturday night, just shortly after 9 p.m. That's when Brooklyn Park police responded to Zane Avenue North and 80th Avenue for reports of several shots fired at a home and also a car. Then not even five minutes later, police responded to another shooting just a few blocks away. Police believe that both of those incidents are connected. And then a few hours later in the early morning hours around 4 a.m., police say two people were shot at a business on Edinburgh Center Drive. One person was taken to the hospital and later died. Many community members say there needs to be change. Brooklyn Park uh, they have one of the finest police department in the nation, but it just doesn't take the police uh, department alone. It also take uh, uh, intervention groups that will be there to mediate, to talk to the kids, to do the work on the streets, boots on the ground. Now, as of this morning, police haven't released any information about a suspect or suspects or the identity of that victim. But they say if you have any information about what happened over the weekend to reach out to them, guys. Huh. All right, CC Gaines reporting live this morning. Thank you. This morning, the BCA is investigating a police chase that happened on I 94 in Minneapolis. It all started around 4 Sunday morning when St. Paul police officers were called to a home on Fremont Avenue. Witnesses say someone was kicking down a door and they also heard gunshots. Police say a man ran from the scene and they followed the suspect, which led to a chase that ended at the Cedar Avenue exit. We are told the man had a life threatening injury and made calls for an update on his condition, but we have yet to hear back. Next month, Adam Fravel, the man accused of killing Winona woman Maddie Kingsbury, will be back in court. Fravel is Kingsbury's ex boyfriend and the father of her two kids. Now we're learning a weekend benefit for Kingsbury's family raised more than $35,000. Maddie's body was found Wednesday after she was missing for more than two months. Fravel has been charged with her murder. The money raised is going to Maddie's parents, who are taking care of her children. 604, here is a live picture right now coming out of Miami, Florida. Former President Donald Trump will head there in a matter of hours ahead of his arraignment tomorrow. He's set to appear at the federal courthouse and face federal criminal charges from the Department of Justice. Garrett Hake is there this morning with more on the latest indictment against Donald Trump. Good morning. Coming up this morning on today, we'll have the latest on Donald Trump's weekend spent attacking the special counsel investigation into his handling of classified documents and the special counsel himself. Meanwhile, here in Miami, preparations are well underway for what will be the highest profile criminal defendant in U.S. history, the first former president ever indicted on federal charges. We'll have more on the Trump team's reaction and the stunning reaction from one of his former cabinet officials who's read that indictment all 37 counts against the former president. All of that coming up this morning on today. 
Over the weekend, Governor Walls was on MSNBC and he was asked about former President Trump's indictment. Here's what he had to say. Uh, we all know the rules. We know what's acceptable on this. And I think, you know, the, the former president will get all due process. He'll be innocent until proven guilty. But uh, this is what we're talking about now rather than talking about improving lives. Out here in Minnesota, we're trying to figure out how to feed our kids, how to improve our schools, and how to innovate mm -hmm. for the future. So um, justice needs to be served, and none of us are above the law. And like I say, I think the rules are clear. This legal process is expected to be a long one, so be sure to stay with CARE 11 for the latest on air and online, and as well as our social media platforms. Right now, a controversial Alina health policy is on pause. It stops treatment for some patients once they reach $4,500 of medical debt. The New York Times exposed this policy. They found some patients with chronic illnesses were not able to make appointments until they paid off their debt. Health systems cannot legally deny emergency care. Alina says the policy was in line with Minnesota law. Construction on the Highway 10 project in Anoka is causing some headaches for neighbors and drivers. Work started in 2022 to reconstruct and improve roads and bridges on Highway 10 between Thurston Avenue and 7th Avenue. But neighbors near the Ferry Street Bridge, which was demolished back in March, say that even with the signs about road closures, drivers keep coming through. Yes, I've noticed a lot of people don't really seem to know what they're doing coming through the construction. It's been pretty confusing. I live on a dead end road and we've been getting about twice the traffic we normally do. Yeah, that's never fun. MnDOT was not available yesterday for the story, but their project website says those headed to the cabin who normally take Highway 10 should consider taking another route. The Highway 10 project is expected to wrap up in spring of next year. This morning, people in Howard Lake are cleaning up after weekend storms. Those storms swept across central Minnesota on Saturday, bringing in heavy rain, hail and strong winds. Howard Lake, which is west of the Twin Cities, got a lot of damage from down power lines and trees on homes. And so that shattered. Um, I mean, our boat is kind of tipping over a little bit. The hood of his car is like completely smashed. And actually in front of his truck, we have another car. So I haven't even been over there to see what the damage is. Uh, crews have been working hard to restore power to homes. At last check, only a few homes were still without power. And then check out the wild scene in West St. Paul over the weekend. This flash flooding caused backups over on Robert Street. You can see drivers struggling. You see the headlights there. That car stalled out in that rising water. Crazy scenes across the uh, state this past weekend, guys. Yeah, I was saying in Plymouth, I didn't get my, I was hoping for more rain because yeah. my yard is still pretty crunchy, but I am Same. loving this cool down. Open the windows, Enjoy give the AC it today, a break, right? Because tomorrow's going to be noticeably warmer, and then we're already talking about 90 degrees come Wednesday and Thursday. So get ready for that. Also, you'll notice a little haze today, more haze as you get into Wednesday and Thursday as well. Now we'll see a wind shift here right now. Winds are light out of the west, but winds will shift out of the northwest and kick in a little breezy too by the afternoon. So that's when you'll notice the haze, some wildfire smoke being blown on uh, to our skies here. But looking over downtown Minneapolis right now, things mainly quiet weather today. I just have a little haze and a cloud too. some sun and clouds today. It's going to be quiet. Temperatures are going to be a little bit warmer than yesterday in the upper 70s, which is seasonal. Yesterday was below average right now. 55, a nice, cool, crisp 55. That is uh, feels very comfortable out, but some folks are tweeting me. Shout out to Shaletta. She says it's too cold for her. Uh, so it really depends on, you know, what you're getting ready to do, who you are. If you think 56 is a little too chilly, grab the jacket. If not, uh, you know, enjoy. Temperature is up, up to the upper 70s by this afternoon. Tonight, quiet. You have some passing clouds tonight with temperatures in the mid 50s. All right, here's your seven day forecast. We'll break this down for you. Temperatures start warming up again Tuesday and Wednesday. Look at Thursday. You'll see forecast highs in the 90s. Also, the humidity on the rise on Thursday. Friday, 82 with some scattered showers. By Saturday, a chance for showers uh, again. And it is Father's Day weekend, so keep that in mind. Coming up here in about 10 minutes, I'll be diving into some uh, wildfire smoke. I'll I'll show you that graphic and I'll let you know where and when the smoke will be thick here in the upper Midwest. Uh, plus a look at the drought monitor as well. Yeah, it was nice to see blue skies yesterday. All right, guy, thank you. Well, in just a few hours, the long awaited painted turtle is opening at Lake Nokomis. The restaurant is replacing longtime mainstay Sandcastle after that restaurant announced that last season was its last. The painted turtle will be run by the same group behind Unleashed Hops and Hounds. 
and its menu includes everything from hot dogs and walleye to duck wings and barbecued jackfruit. Yum.